What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Highland Park 21 year old. Stick around. Okay, so we're getting fancy today. I've got the Highland Park 21 with me. And the thing is, I don't usually drink whiskeys that are this old or this expensive. Uh, usually I tend to stick to stuff that's more affordable, more accessible, and that's because I'm, it's a word, poor. So having something like this is a real treat for me. Usually I only get to try this kind of whiskey when I'm at a whiskey show or maybe I'm hanging out with friends who are more successful than I am, uh, which ironically is how I happen to have this bottle. I've got a buddy here in Taiwan who's a fan of the channel. He and I often exchange bottles and I always walk away feeling terrible. Like, I'll give him something that's fancy to me. Maybe it's like a Cavalan. Cavalans are like $100 US here, by the way. So maybe it's like a Cavalan, maybe it's a nice 18 year old, and he'll give me something much older, much fancier, like double the price. Now, I don't remember specifically what I traded for this one, but I can tell you that it wasn't fair. Obviously, the guy is super nice about it, so Alan, thank you very much. Now let's talk about our 21 here. The one I've got with me today is the 2019 release. This is combined from 26 different casks. We have nine first fill European sherry seasoned hogsheads, nine bourbon hogsheads, and nine refill hogsheads. Um, so that's fine. As for the brand, I actually love Highland Park. I think they're a great brand. I realize they're not for everyone though. They do, of course, have a long history of silly marketing with stuff like Vikings and tattoos and legends. Uh, they're like a guy who just found out that his great great grandparents were Scandinavian, and now he thinks he's a full blown Viking. But his name is Dennis and he sells real estate. Now, I understand Vikings are part of Orkney's rich cultural heritage, and I don't want to take that away from them. Uh, and to be fair, to Highland Park's credit, they have gotten a little bit better in recent years. They've toned that stuff down a little bit. But for a while, it was a lot. And beyond just the marketing, uh, they don't always give us the ABV that we want. Um, I think the brand is quite well liked, but they're not exactly like a beacon of consistency in the whiskey world. But... If you've tried some of their better OBs, if you've tried some of their better IBs, of which there are a lot, then you know that their whiskey can be fantastic. In fact, I do think that they can, if they're unhindered, make some of Scotland's finest whiskey. I love the house style. I love the heather repeat. They're usually sherry forward, beautiful maltiness. Highland Park makes good whiskey. And this one being a 21 year old release and not cheap, Expectations are quite high, so let's jump into a review and see where I land on it. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. For the look of the bottle, we have the typical Highland Park presentation, which I don't love, especially on a 21 year old. So we've got like the tribal tattoo on the neck, we've got the engravings, we've got the Viking stuff. That's fine. I don't care when it's the 12 year old, but when it's 21 year old, I don't know, it's a bit too tacky. I feel like it should look more premium. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but for presentation, I'm giving this two out of five. As far as information goes, we don't get anything really on the label. We have to look to the box. The box says its golden color is driven entirely by casks with no additives, which is a fancy way of saying non-chill filtered natural color. That's great. It also gives us blurbs with the cask breakdown tasting notes. So our information is good. Uh, but here's, here's what we really need to know. We take great pride in making our whiskey to the exacting standards laid down in 1798 by our founder Magnus Unsen, a direct descendant of the Vikings who settled in Orkney over 1,000 years ago. Our Viking forefathers were skilled artists and craftspeople who used the limited natural resources available to them with great creativity and intelligence. From vast wooden longships to intricately fashioned jewelry in silver, gold, and amber, the Viking artifacts in our museums today bear testament to their creator's extraordinary skill. This is a fine example of our own creativity with limited resources and the commitment to craftsmanship we share with our ancestors. Listen, I know I'm being mean here. As long as the important information is available to us, and it is, all the fluff on the side doesn't really matter. Is it silly? Yes, but it's fine. And besides, Vikings are cool. I kind of wish my grandfather was Norwegian. I would have a lot more tattoos. On the nose, this is lighter than you'd expect. I get lots of fruitiness here. I get stuff like papaya, 
there's orchard fruit, like there's apples, there's pears, there's plums, there's a touch of salt. This is honeyed and floral. That famous heathery peat is in here, but it's faint. It's a really nice nose, although it is a bit restrained. For the palette and finish, our texture here is nothing special. On arrival, right away, we do notice that this is an aged whiskey. Uh, there's some nice oakiness here. Our flavors are all very integrated. We get some florals, some heather, sultanas, papaya, orange, gentle peat, leather, soft coastal notes, caramel, butter, cream, and walnuts. It's a medium finish. Okay, so this whiskey is really nice, but it's one of those ones that doesn't hit consistently. It depends a lot on your mood. I've had times where this absolutely blew me away. I thought it was an incredible whiskey. And I've had times where, of course, I thought it was nice, but it didn't blow me away. So it's not super consistent in that regard. When it works though, it's incredible stuff. It is very much a Highland Park. It's very much in keeping with the, the Highland Park house style, but it's also very much in keeping with older whiskeys, being that it's more, more about subtlety, more about nuance. It's more toned down. It's not quite as loud. It's not quite as bold. So this one's on the more like quiet and sophisticated side. So it does take a mood. I'm not inclined to sip this casually and it's totally not about the price because it's got that subtlety, that sophistication. It just doesn't feel like a casual sipper. Also, it's totally about the price. I think this one will work for the majority of Highland Park fans. Just know that you're signing up for something that's going to be a little bit calmer. Is it sherried? Yes, but not quite as intensely as you may be expecting. Uh, is it peated? Yes, but it's on the gentler side. And of course, Highland Park is already a gently peated whiskey. This is gentler still. Uh, it goes in a more floral and delicate direction. So be ready for that. Now, before I flatter this stuff too much, there were a couple of things that I wouldn't say are problems, but just stuff that I noticed. Uh, Flavor-wise, it's great. It tastes like a luxurious whiskey, but texture-wise, not quite as much. As I mentioned earlier, the texture here is nothing special. It doesn't have that viscous oiliness. It doesn't feel in your mouth like a luxurious whiskey. That sounds weird. Also, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very mood-based whiskey, so it's not going to hit consistently every time you pour it. So you should be in the right mood when you pour this whiskey if that makes any sense. If you want a big, bold Highland Park, you're not gonna find it here. I would check for the cast strength, obviously. Otherwise, you can look for things like uh, Full Volume, that was a great one. Dark Origins, another good one. Even Twisted Tattoo, those are gonna be a little bit more forward and a little bit more bold. Those whiskeys are gonna be a lot more casual, and personally, I find them more consistent, but I do think this is a better whiskey than those whiskeys. This is one of the best Highland Parks out there. Uh, it's an expensive one, but if you want that nuance, that subtlety, that sophistication, all those pretentious adjectives, this is the one to go for. But hey, sometimes you want something a little bit classier, a little bit more gentlemanly, a little bit more contemplative. If you're wearing your tuxedo and your monocle and you just want to sit down with something that is very sophisticated, that's got great flavor, complexity, nuance, all that stuff, this is a great choice and it's a great whiskey. My score is 91. So this is an absolute beauty to sip. I'm very lucky to have this bottle, but you know, you can't talk about something this expensive and prestigious and not at least touch on value, uh, which gets tricky, but let's try. So value is tricky because you might be in a different tax bracket than I am. This costs about 260 US, just over 210 pounds. And I wouldn't pay that and I didn't pay that, but that being said, if that money was nothing to me and I wanted a luxurious Highland Park, this one does deliver on what you'd expect, what you'd want from a premium Highland Park. Like if you live in a world where $250 plus bottles are chump change and you want something that's luxurious, expensive, sophisticated, this will do the trick. And if I lived in that world, I'd be buying bottles like this all the time. But I don't. So I don't. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Always appreciated. Of course, I want to hear from you. Have you tried Highland Park 21? What did you think? Did you think it was worth the money? Let me know down below. Also down below, you can tell me what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.